Congressman Jim Sensenbrenner is up next. But first, some more news. An Armenian Catholic priest and his father were gunned down as they were traveling in a car in northeastern Syria on Monday. ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attack. Father Josep Bedoyan was the head of the Armenian Catholic community in the Kurdish-majority city of Kamishli. The men were on their way to oversee the restoration of a church. Pope Francis expressed solidarity with the Armenian Catholic Christians in Syria over the murders. Also on Monday, two separate bombings in Kamishli killed at least six people and wounded 22 others. The Armenian Catholic community in Syria goes back centuries. Today, it includes some 600,000 faithful. And protests against social inequality continue after almost a month in Chile. On Tuesday, huge demonstrations and a national strike brought much of the country to a standstill. Chile is one of the wealthiest countries in Latin America, but there's wide disparity between rich and poor. A student protest over rising subway fares in October has grown into a broad movement demanding reforms to education, health care, and pensions. Late Friday, or last Friday, rather, an estimated 75,000 people had gathered in a Santiago Square to protest the ruling government of President Sebastian Piñera. Crowds stormed La Asuncion Church, removing pews, statues, and other religious icons, setting them on fire. The bishops of Chile condemned the attack, asking for peace and calm. Over 20 people have died, and at least 2,500 others have been injured in the violence. Back in the States, the United States House of Representatives impeachment probe began its first public hearings this week. The chair of the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff, kicked off the proceedings on Wednesday. But will he and House Democrats be able to make the case for the impeachment of President Trump? Here to talk about what's transpired so far and to give us his analysis of the process is member of the House Judiciary Committee, Wisconsin Congressman Jim Sensenbrenner. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me, Raymond. Now, Congressman, you went through this impeachment process almost 21 years ago with the Clinton impeachment. I need to ask you off the top, why is the Intelligence Committee and not the judiciary conducting these hearings? And what's the difference for our viewers? Well, uh, Adam Schiff, I guess, was named by Pelosi as the point person uh, for the impeachment inquiry. Uh, ordinarily, the Judiciary Committee, which under House rules has got jurisdiction over impeachments, uh, would be dealing with this as we have in the past. Mm. Uh, but apparently, Mrs. Pelosi decided that Chairman Nadler of New York was not the person to lead the charge against the president. Mm. What I can say is that uh, Schiff has uh, repeatedly lied to the American people, and everything we heard yesterday from Ambassador Taylor and Mr. Kent was all hearsay, and it couldn't be introduced in as evidence in any civil or criminal proceedings in any court in the United States. Congressman, the Democrats are attempting to prove a quid pro quo between President Trump and the Ukrainian president. In his opening statement, Adam Schiff zeroed in on public admissions by Mick Mulvaney. During a White House press briefing, the acting chief of staff said, I have news for everybody. And he's referring to that call with the Ukrainian president. Get over it. There's going to be political influence in foreign policy. That is going to happen. Now, Schiff had this to say about Mulvaney's statement. If we find that the president of the United States abused his power and invited foreign interference in our elections, or if he sought to condition, coerce, extort, or bribe an ally into conducting investigations to aid his reelection campaign and did so by withholding official acts, a White House meeting, or hundreds of millions of dollars of needed military aid, must we simply get over it? Is this what Americans should now expect from their president? If this is not impeachable conduct, what is? Congressman Sensenbrenner, your reaction, first of all. First, the transcript that was publicly released, the President Trump's call with Ukrainian President Zelensky, has no mention of the aid at all. We have found out that the Ukrainians were not aware that the aid was being held up. Mm -hmm. uh, after the phone call, the aid was released. So the Ukrainians got the aid, and they're going to be able to better resist the Russians who occupy the eastern third of their country. 
-hmm. But go back and look at what Biden did. Biden was bragging about holding up a, until the prosecutor that was looking into the Burisma Energy Company uh, was fired. And look, he used kind of a bad word uh, mm -hmm. and said within eight hours, uh, the prosecutor was fired. Mm -hmm. Now, that was a quid pro quo. But let me get to quid pro quos in general. The American people, when we give out aid, whether it is foreign aid or domestic aid, expect people to do something that advances our government's objectives mm -hmm. in exchange for the aid. The aid is not a charitable contribution. <laughs> and the sooner everybody recognizes it, uh, we ought to get o we are the ones that ought to get over it. Mm. You know, finally, Ukraine is probably the most corrupt country in Europe. And I think every American, and hopefully including Adam Schiff, uh, don't want to have our money being sent for a specific purpose, meaning weapons, and ending up in some corrupt Ukrainian's pocket or Swiss bank account. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be letting down the hard-earned taxpayers' money uh, that was being given uh, to the Ukraine. And we should apply that across the board. Uh, you got corruption, uh, no aid. You get rid of the corruption, we'll send the aid. Mm. Uh, I think that is a fair uh, assessment of what the United States government, led by its president, ought to be doing. Now, Congressman, uh, I've heard repeatedly the Biden case that you raised a moment ago. People say, well, wait a minute. Multiple countries, including the American government at the time, the Obama administration, they all wanted this prosecutor out of business in Ukraine. And so that was extending and furthering American interests. They charged what President Trump was doing was furthering his own political interests. Well, both of these issues related to corruption. Uh, I can say that given the fact that the aid wasn't talked about in uh, the phone call that uh, Schiff and others are using to try to get rid of the president, uh, I think is something that is extremely material. Mm. Now, with Biden getting up and bragging about conditioning the aid on firing the prosecutor, I guess what the message is, is that if you don't want to have your activities looked at, announced you're running for president on the Democratic ticket, and that gives you virtual immunity on what you've done in the past. Mm. That's a bunch of bunk. Hmm. What, what is the predicate? And I want to I want to remind people. We heard Schiff there mention coercion, extortion, and bribery. What is the predicate for those charges? Do you see those charges being properly laid out or proven at this point? No, uh, they aren't properly laid out. <clears throat> there is no evidence except hearsay uh, that indicates any of those things occurred. And the thing is, is let's get real. Uh, next year is an election year. The Senate is not going to have a trial until after the first of the year. And don't people think that it is better a year from now to have the American people decide whether Donald Trump should stay as president rather than having a bunch of politicians who's hated him from the start uh, make that decision hmm. f by kicking him out of office hmm. uh, for basically saying a few words to President Zelensky, will you do me a favor? And hmm. that's what this whole shebang involves. Hmm. The moment being sold as a bombshell was when Ambassador William Taylor testified the other day that the president was overheard by a member of his staff on a July 26th phone call asking the EU ambassador, Gordon Sondland, about the investigations. Listen. The member of my staff could hear President Trump on the phone asking Ambassador Sondland about the investigations. Ambassador Sondland told President Trump the Ukrainians were ready to move forward. Following the call with President Trump, the member of my staff asked Ambassador Sondland what President Trump thought about Ukraine. Ambassador Sondland responded that President Trump cares more about the investigations of Biden, which Giuliani was pressing for. At the time I gave my deposition on October 22nd, I was not aware of this information. I'm including it here for completeness. Now, this was sold as a this was sold as a bombshell, Congressman. Is it? Did this change anything? No, it didn't change anything, and it's a fizzle. Now, if I can put my lawyer's hat on for a moment, 
One is that it's hearsay, and Taylor said so. Mm -hmm. But second, there is a rule in court that it's the best evidence that has to be presented. The best evidence uh, are not what somebody has heard that somebody else may have said, but the people who actually said it or heard the call. That's mm -hmm. not what this bombshell is. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they better put another fuse in their bomb if they want to use that. Congressman Sensenbrenner, what is the difference in the way this process is being uh, executed as compared to the one you led during the Clinton impeachment? And is this whole affair too granular and confusing, frankly, to arrest the attention of the American people? Well, the American people are getting pretty bored about this going on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. I can say that 21 years ago when I uh, led the uh, drive against President Clinton, uh, we gave President Clinton every break and every due process requirement uh, to allow him to present evidence. Schiff is not allowing the president to submit evidence in his defense. Now, how can you have a trial if you only hear one side of the story? And what Schiff is doing through his selective leaks in the, quote, closed hearings, unquote, as well as the public hearings that we are now being treated uh, to, uh, is to let the American people know one side of the story. Uh, Joseph Stalin, as he's roasting in hell, should be smiling today. Mm. The Republicans argue, Congressman, that the two witnesses, uh, Taylor and Kent, have second and third hand knowledge of these calls between the president and the Ukrainian president Zelensky. Here's Congressman Jim Jordan. Watch this. We got six people having four conversations in one sentence, and you just told me this is where you got your clear understanding. Which, I, I mean, even though you had three opportunities with President Zelensky for him to tell you, you know what? We're going to do these investigations to get the aid. Didn't tell you three different times. Never makes an announcement. Never tweets about it. Never does a CNN interview. Ambassador, you weren't on the call, were you? The president, you didn't listen on President Trump's call and President Zelensky's call? I did not. You've never talked with Chief of Staff Mulvaney? I never did. You never met the president? That's correct. You had three meetings again with Zelensky and it didn't come up? And two of those they had never heard about as far as I know. And so there was Linsky, no reason for and it. President Zelensky never made an announcement. This, this is what I can't believe. And you're their star witness. You're their first witness. Mr. You're Jordan. the guy. You're the guy based on this, based on, I mean, I've seen, I've seen church prayer chains that are easier to understand than this. Uh, Congressman Sensenbrenner, what did Jim Jordan discover there? <laughs> what Jim Jordan discovered is this is all hearsay. Somebody said something and somebody overheard it and said something else to somebody else to somebody else. Mm -hmm. you know, and again, uh, if someone presents that kind of evidence in a civil or criminal trial in any court in the United States, the evidence is going to get thrown out. Mm -hmm. And for Schiff and Pelosi and company to try to use evidence like that to overturn an election where Donald J. Trump was duly elected as president of the United States is shocking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, granted, I know that the other side really doesn't like to listen to uh, the evidence that they don't like. Uh, but American people are fair people, and just being told one side of the story is something that a totalitarian regime would do. Hmm. It's time for them to grow up, it's time for them to quit it, and it's time for them to start dealing with things that the American people are really interested in, like reducing prescription drug prices hmm. and then creating jobs through uh, the ratification of the free trade agreement hmm. with Canada and Mexico. You know, I watched the entire hearing the other day, and at the bottom of this, I think what you're left with is, what was the president's intent? Was he asking the Ukrainians to investigate based on questions of corruption in that country involving American figures, including the Bidens? Or was he conniving with the Ukrainians to get them to investigate the Bidens for his own political purpose? But I don't know how you prove that. How do you prove the intention and the heart of somebody on the phone? You can't do that. And, you know, that's why uh, courts require live witnesses in the so-called best evidence rule, so that the jury, in this case, the jury is the American people, mm -hmm. can actually see their demeanor as they are testifying. Uh, Adam Schiff is not giving the American people uh, that opportunity to look at the demeanor and talking about third and fourth hand 
uh, recollections of somebody who may be listening in on a phone conversation. Mm. That's just wrong. Yeah, NBC News, Congressman, uh, they, they had a, a headline that said the two star witnesses lack pizzazz, you know, in the eyes of the American people. I mean, when <laughs> I, I covered the Clinton uh, uh, impeachment uh, march, I, I remember you from those days. And what you had there was, first of all, an explosive sexual scandal that then became a question of perjury. Did the president perjure himself? And the House determined he did. But that focused, I think, the mind of Americans. You heard them talking about it at bars and at schools and, and all over the country. This doesn't seem to have that kind of um, enthusiasm or vibe about it. No, it doesn't. You know, one of the reasons why both the Clinton and Nixon impeachments went further is that there was an independent counsel who ah. did the investigation and forwarded his findings to the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. And Starr actually said that in four cases, the president may have committed an impeachable offense, mm -hmm. recognizing that it's only the House of Representatives that can determine that mm -hmm. under the Constitution. Now, here we had Mr. Mueller as a special counsel, and he submitted his report that said nothing. Uh, Mr. Nadler and the Judiciary Committee had Mr. Mueller uh, before us for a number of hours. Uh, there was no smoking gun there. Huh. And as a result, you don't hear many of the Democrats talking about the Mueller report anymore yeah. because the Mueller report said no collusion, no obstruction. Hmm. Now, Republicans have asked that the whistleblower who triggered this Ukrainian inquiry, which became the uh, impeachment inquiry, they want that whistleblower to come forward and testify. Now, Adam Schiff has so far said no, he, he will not grant that request. Does it matter if the whistleblower testifies? And uh, do you believe Schiff had contact or his staff with that whistleblower? He claims no. Well, I can't say whether he's telling the truth or not, uh, because what Schiff has been saying uh, for over a year now, it's been a mixed bag on that. Mm -hmm. What I can say is, yeah, the whistleblower ought to come and testify. The whistleblower is the initial complaining witness. Mm -hmm. And you can talk to any prosecutor uh, in the country, and Schiff was one of them once upon a time, is saying if you can't get the complaining witness to come and testify, you've got no case. Mm. Uh, I, I want to go back to one quick point before I let you go. Uh, just wrap this up for me. Do you see anything that emerged this week that you believe will rise to the level of an impeachable offense against Donald Trump? Absolutely not. I haven't seen anything that rises to the level of an impeachable offense in almost three years of investigation uh, by people who couldn't believe that Trump was elected in the first place. They omit uh, wondering why they lost that election, which would be very instructive to them, uh, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And they've been grasping at straws to find something impeachable. Uh, they've struck out. They're on about strike six now. Wow. Prior to the start of these public hearings, an NBC Wall Street Journal poll found that 49% of Americans believe the president should be impeached. Now, that's before they heard any evidence, while 46% said he should not be impeached. Uh, it, it doesn't seem that these hearings changed many people's minds either. Well, no, I don't think so. Uh, what I can say is it doesn't surprise me that the poll had that result uh, because Schiff, during his secret hearings, which weren't so secret, uh, ended up coming up with a bunch of leaks that were all one-sided. And when you hear one side of the story for weeks on end, you know, of course, you're, you're inclined to believe it. Uh, you know, we still aren't able to allow the president to uh, pr submit his own defense. The Republican witnesses were by and large turned down. Mm -hmm. uh, the president's counsel has not been able to cross-examine uh, witnesses. Mm -hmm. And at least during a trial in court, and this is kind of a trial, right. uh, whether one wants to describe it or not, with very, very high stakes, uh, the jury listens to both sides of the argument before reaching a conclusion. Yeah. Adam Schiff does not let the American people to hear both sides of the argument. Then uh, there are polls that are taken uh, that show that there is a split verdict. 
Uh, there are some people who didn't vote for Trump in the beginning uh, that wished he wasn't around. Uh, that reverses the result of the majority of the American people uh, through the Electoral College uh, that ended up duly electing Donald Trump as President of the United States three years ago. Yeah. Congressman Jim Sensenbrenner, we will leave it there. We will check in with you in the days ahead. Thank you for your time. I'm here. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you. Thank you.